Hey everyone, so let's take a look at question 8 in sample exam 3 in chem 11. This question is a thermochemistry question about bomb calorimeter and using bomb calorimeter to determine delta E of combustion. So the question has two parts to it. The first part says you take 6.79 grams of methane gas and you burn it in a bomb calorimeter and then you find that the bomb has a temperature change of 10.8 degrees and then after that you take a different substance, C2H2, acetylene, and then you put it at that same bomb calorimeter and then the temperature changed by 16.9 degrees instead. And the question is, what's the delta of combustion of C2H2? So let's think about um, the two steps real quickly. So the first one is, again, I put some CH4 and then in the second case, I put C2H2 in the bomb calorimeter. And remember, bomb calorimeter has water inside. And so we have water surrounding the combustion reaction and in the combustion reaction in this case the delta T is 10.8 degrees Celsius in the other combustion reaction the delta T is 16.9 degrees Celsius and one of the the other thing that we were told is that there is 6.79 grams of the material which is methane CH4 and in this one there is 12.6 grams of that material which is C2H2 and so how do we find out the delta E of combustion well remember that in order to get the delta E, in this case, it's just the heat, right? In the bomb calorimeter, remember delta E is equal to Q because this is a constant volume calorimeter. So delta E is just equal to the heat that's being released in that uh, constant volume calorimeter. And in to get Q, you have three ways of calculating. Remember that you can use C times delta T, you can use M times C specific heat times delta T, or you can use N times C sub M times delta T. In this case, if you look at the question, we're not given any of the heat capacity quantity. We're not given specific heat, we're not given molar heat capacity or heat capacity. However, what we're given is delta T, okay? Now this is one of those things that people sometimes get confused about. They see mass here, 6.79 grams, so they think, okay, maybe I should use this one because there's mass and there's delta T. I just need to find the C sub S here of this quantity. But uh, you can't really find it given the information that you have. So how do you solve this problem? This is when you have to remember that in a bomb calorimeter, right? So what I did here in part one is I take a known sample CH4 and what I mean by a known sample here is I know the energy of combustion of that sample already. I know that when I burn so for CH4 I know that if I were to burn one mole I'm gonna get that much energy okay 802 kilojoules of energy release. So that means that if I burn 6.79 grams I can figure out how much energy is going to be released right. I just need to convert this quantity right here, the delta E of combustion to per gram quantity, and then I can multiply it with 6.79 grams, and that will tell me exactly how much energy is being released by the combustion of 6.79 grams of CH4 gas. So let's do that. We'll find out that the delta E for the actual reaction, or 6.79 grams, is going to be 802 kilojoules. This is per mole. And then we'll convert this, so we're going to use our molar mass, 16 grams per mole for CH4. And then we're going to multiply it by 6. 0.79 grams of that CH4. So this cancels, this cancels, and we're left with 340.3 kilojoules. So the actual energy released by the combustion of 6.79 grams of CH4 is this much energy in that bomb calorimeter. At the same time, we were told that the delta T that corresponds to that change is 10.8 degrees, right? So in other words, we can find out our heat capacity of the bomb. And remember, that to get that you just use this equation that I've written down here which is that we have Q equals C times delta T so if I want C I just need to take Q divided by delta T and Q sub V remember is delta E and delta E is this number that we just got negative 340.3 kilojoules and then we divide it by the delta T which is 10.8 degrees Celsius and remember for this type of value we take the absolute value because the heat capacity is always a positive number and when you do that you get 31.5 kilojoules per degree Celsius. This is what we call the heat capacity of the bomb, right? This is basically telling you that for each increase in degree Celsius, there is going to be 31.5 kilojoules of energy that's released to the bomb calorimeter. Once we have this, then it becomes relatively easy to see which of the three heat equation can be used to calculate our delta E in this case. The one that works best, of course, is this one right here, because we already know the C, we can just use the delta T to help us find the Q sub V for the second substance which is uh, C2H2. 
right? So that's what we'll do in this case. We would find the Q sub V for C2H2. And to do that, we just take the bomb heat capacity times its delta T for C2H2 in this case. And that would be 31.5 kilojoules per degree Celsius times 16.9 degrees Celsius. Now, um, that would give me a negative number in the end because remember this is combustion reaction, so it's gonna release. So you can think about having that negative at the front of this earlier appearing, right? And then that would give you 532.58 kilojoules. Now this much energy you get from combusting 12.6 grams of C2H2. So the question asks for per mole quantity. So I just need to use my molar mass to convert it to per mole quantity. In this case, 26 is the molar mass. So I get 1099 kilojoules per mole of C2H2. And the answer is A.